I'd like to introduce to you our panel on, from the health and wellness industry. We have um, Sasha, Professor Salzberg, um, right here in the, in the first position. And we've got Yulia, who is coming from the UN. Everybody here is from the health and wellness industry. We've got Tian, who is coming from China, and a background in traditional Chinese medicine. We've got Andre Parodi here, um, who is coming from Italy, and a producer of uh, refined products. Um, uh, sorry, unrefined. <laughs> Excuse me. Unrefined oils, products, and foods. Um, sourcing ingredients from all around the world. We have got Marsha, who has um, opened up medical centers in Russia. And she's going to talk to us also about technology. And we have uh, finally uh, Daniel, who's coming from Spain. So we've got an international group of people here. Daniel is going to contribute to us a little bit from about what he produces in his company, um, wellness ingredients, products, and also education. Our focus today will be the SDG um, health and well-being. Uh, our our uh, panelists are going to talk about how they can, from their different parts of the health and wellness industry, contribute to improving um, the state of health and well-being in the world by 2030. That's a big goal. But I think it's doable. Um, if I can ask each and every one of our panelists to introduce a little bit about the work they do, uh, starting with Sasha, please. Uh, Marta, thank you very much for the introduction. Also, thank you to the organizers of the Caspian Week for inviting me. Uh, my name is Sasha Salzberg. I'm a cardiovascular surgeon. I'm a professor at the University of Zurich for heart surgery. Um, my daily work is composed of uh, cardiac surgery, focusing on arrhythmias, but I also have a big activity in hu humanitarian work, which is non-profit. The Eurasia Heart Foundation is the foundation I'm presenting here today, which does work all over the European, Asian uh, part of the world. And I would like to share with you some ideas also on how a for-profit clinical setting in an industrial country like Switzerland can also help uh, drive non-profit uh, development and translation of knowledge and science into the healthcare industry to really bring state-of-the-art therapies to the people uh, in the field and not only go there on humanitarian missions. So that's something I would like to share with you today and thank you for having me. Thank you, Sasha. We're moving on to Yulia, who's going to introduce the work she does. Uh, thank you very much. My name is uh, Yulia Andreeva. I work for the United Nations Development Program and uh, I support um, a two billion health portfolio um, at the organization in Geneva and in New York. Um, I focus on risk management, partnership and uh, legal advice. Uh, my team fights the epidemics in the most challenging countries in the world, such as Afghanistan and Sudan, and we also work quite a lot in the greater Caspian region, um, just to um, sort of illustrate the relevance of my work as we speak. WHO is having a meeting on the new Chinese virus. Who has heard about the virus that is coming from China? Yep, exactly. Uh, it's uh, WHO is considering whether to call it a global health emergency. And my uh, organization, as the operational arm of the UN, we will be the first responders on the ground uh, dealing with the, uh, with the issue. And actually, one of the main concerns for the spread of this virus globally, um, it's an interesting piece of trivia, is the celebration of the Lunar New Year this coming weekend because uh, many Chinese are expected to travel to other countries to celebrate um, the, the new year. And this will mean that actually the virus is likely to spread even faster than we anticipate. Thank you. Thank you, Yulia. I'd like to introduce Tian, who's coming 
from China? From China Wyverns. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna stay in Switzerland for Chinese New Year. <laughs> Yeah, I come from China, and uh, before I started my MBA in business school law, Zong, I saw my professor here, his panelist too. And uh, now I work in the Infinitus China Company Limited, which is a large scale health herbal product, which is just developing, producing, and distributing Chinese herbal health product all over the world. We have 32. Uh, branches in China, 7,500 exclusive stores in China. Also, we have companies in the southeast countries like Thailand, and uh, Philippines, Singapore, uh, Malaysia. Also, we have uh, companies in uh, Canada, and we are about to open the market in the Kazakhstan, the Russia. Mm. And my my role in this company is this, is senior operation director, mainly responsible for sales and new market exploration. Thank you. Thank you, Tian. I'd like to introduce now Andrea. Good evening. Uh, I am a founder of Parodi Nutra, who is a company who produces specialty oils, uh, uh, vegetable oils for health, you know, for food and uh, uh, cosmetics. And because we are here for health and wellness, uh, these are ingredients that we source all around the world. Uh, and uh, we are here to, to help and provide you know, the biodiversity oils uh, that are re rare and almost uh, impossible to find today in the market. So. Thank you, Andrea. Now we will introduce Marsha, who will talk a little bit about the work she's doing. Uh, hello, I'm coming from Moscow and I'm co-founder of Medical Center's uh, uh, WellCure and uh, uh, I will speak about um, increasing resistance to diseases, also about the prevention because uh, according to the um, uh, American Psychological Association, chronic stress is now linked to the um, six leading causes of death. So we have, we have to speak about it, how to avoid stress situations uh, in our life and uh, burnout syndrome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marsha. We've got now um, Daniel, who's going to introduce himself, the work he's doing through his company. Okay. Um, good evening, everything. Um, I'm Daniel. I'm a chief strategy officer for GBOMET, uh, the basis in, in Spain. Um, we made uh, three areas in a specific uh, medical device with everything is patent in USA, Japan, Europe. Uh, focusing the cryopreservation with animals and uh, organs and the second area is digital health with patent 2 in um, cardiovascular, uh, cardio warning uh, plus uh, blockchain solutions for the um, data patients. And the three is the pills for nutraceuticals, the healthcare and wellness. But uh, this is very important. But um, uh, we discovered the um, uh, hydroxytyrosol is a polyphenol. It's very antioxidant, and this is, uh, I think, is uh, the revelation in this uh, year. Thank you, Daniel. So. With a diverse panel like this, I'm just going to reach out to you, each and every one of you, to help me out on telling me how the work you do can help to reduce the um, death rate, the spread of disease, um, social issues that are actually surrounding the spread of disease, and and um, environmental issues that lead to how we source the um, natural products that we need from the environment to make us well, and some of the technologies that we are coming up with um, to, to help us maintain and maintain our well-being and also to address the health. We want to talk about education and um, certainly also alternative medicine. So I'm also coming from a background of wellness. I am, my background is Ayurveda, and um, so I link very well with uh, Tian. And because we, we work with traditional medicine and um, it's more about lifestyle and, or, and really management of, well, you know, managing your health and not waiting till you get sick before you do something. 
And it's, um, you know, we, at Caspian Week, we've been talking about energy, and human beings are significant energy forces in the planet today that need, um, need to actually, we need to invest in our health and well-being. So first, I would really like to talk to Yulia, because <laughs> I think that you actually have a, a very good knowledge of what's happening in the greater Caspian region. And you talked to me about the social issues surrounding how the spread of infectious diseases, diseases are happening because of the social issues and stigmas that surround um, certain unpopular diseases in uh, certain cultures, HIV, uh, drug abuse, and it is uh, killing our youth. And if we can bring, shed some light on such an important subject, please. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, th thank you very much. Uh, first of all, it is true that we're witnessing the uh, emergence and greater diversity, excuse me, of um, viruses and infectious diseases all around the world, and there are at least five reasons for that. The first one is overpopulation. Um, viruses uh, grow much stronger, they get spread much faster, uh, and they, they travel. Second one is globalization and accessibility of travel. We talked about the Lunar New Year, how many tourists will travel to China, how many tourists will travel out of China. This will immediately spread the, the virus around the world. The third reason is climate change, actually. Melting ice is releasing a lot of um, poison bacteria and viruses that were contained for millions of years. Uh, a couple of years ago, there was an outbreak of anthrax in Siberia because of the unusually warm temperatures. So we have to tackle these challenges. Um, and uh, also conspiracy theories. Uh, there are, are now hoax, bogus reports circulating around the internet that supposedly link vaccination to diseases such as um, uh, uh, such as autism. And there are more and more pe uh, parents who choose not to vaccinate their children, which means that many diseases that we won over a lot, many, many years ago, are actually coming back. And we're seeing uh, outbreaks of uh, infections such as measles or polio or rubella, uh, again, all around the world. And then the challenge that is specific to the greater Caspian region um, is actually um, related to conservative policies, uh, a greater role and involvement of the church uh, in civil matters, and uh, increased focus on criminalization of certain behaviors. And the specific example in this area is HIV. Uh, many of us think that this is an African problem, that it doesn't concern us, but actually this is wrong. In Africa, the numbers are declining. HIV, we could say, is contained because we can treat it and it's not, it's not on the rise. However, the only region, the number one region where HIV is rising at an alarming, alarming rate, is the Greater Caspian region and Central Asia. And the leader in this respect, I'm sorry to say, is my own country, that's Russia. We're talking about a 10, 15% increase every year. This means that 250 people get infected every day with HIV. And these are only the detected official numbers. How many unreported cases there are is really hard to estimate, but we're talking at least two, three times more cases. And the leading causes to this are, first of all, criminalization. We criminalize sex work, we criminalize drug use, we criminalize uh, homosexuals. This marginalizes these already fragile groups of populations. They go underground, they use unsafe needles, they don't use contraceptives, they don't get tested, they don't get treatment. So if you think that, that, that the government is doing a good thing by criminalizing drug abuse, no, it is killing your children. 
the second, this, the, the second leading cause for this is the absence of sex education. And here the church is playing a, a big role. We are no longer teaching our children about reproductive health, about the use of, uh, of contraceptives, and this poses an immediate, immediate and serious health threat uh, to, to our use. The third reason is medical privacy laws. Uh, not many of you know that uh, most of the countries in the greater Caspian region have passed exceptions to the medical privacy principle, which actually requires doctors to report uh, drug users, for example, or sex workers or homosexuals to the authorities. This again drives people underground and they don't uh, uh, get tested, they don't go to doctors. Um, and another reason is that this is simply not a priority. There is no education about HIV. How many of you knew that this is a real, huge, alarming, health threat in the greater Caspian region, that it is the only reason, the, the only region where HIV is on the rise. 10-15% a year, 250 people a day get infected. It is the only region in the world where HIV is rising. Not, not many, uh, I'm sure, and this is simply not treated as a priority. There is no education, there is no awareness, there is no treatment, there is a stock out of medication. Even when people get tested, they have difficulty accessing medication and this is not free of charge. This, this again means a spread. And another alarming fact, uh, that it is not contained to certain fragile groups of population like drug users or sex workers or homosexuals. We see a, re a reverse dynamic. Only 1.5% of, of infections come from homosexual intercourse. 48% of cases come from heterosexual intercourse. This means that male to female, this means that men bring infections home and they infect their female partners. It is heterosexual, this is a, a, a reverse in dynamic. It is an emergency, and it is an emergency for the greater Caspian region, and we all need to deal with it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yula, for shedding, shedding light on such uh, important and urgent issue of health in the greater Caspian region. I would like now to take Andre Parodi, who can actually, next to you, okay. who can okay. actually, Andre, you're coming from an industry where you're producing, you, you're sourcing raw materials from around the world um, for wellness purposes, food, and keeping it pure. And you are noticing, you, you, your company is in, in Italy, and um, you're noticing that there are some major challenges that actually connect to environmental issues. And I would like if you could share those with us today. Okay. Okay. Let's say that everybody would like to live more than 100 years, and uh, that is why he, you know, and in health, uh, try to, to survive like uh, we, with the consciousness that we are here. And, um, and uh, we have a, a different place in the world that, that called Blue Zones, where the people live longer, and uh, they are happy and they are active uh, even more than 100 years old. And the secret uh, of this uh, is uh, the, for sure the mental attitude, uh, the movement that they, they move. Uh, so no stress, uh, uh, open air, but the heat, uh, something that is, uh, uh, we call uh, in, uh, SDG points, uh, the number 15 life of, of uh, health, you know, the biodiversity. And uh, these are local people that keep a tradition alive uh, by eating what uh, they are locally harvested. And that is uh, what we miss everybody, because we try to eat uh, what is fast, uh, what uh, is uh, um, edible nearby at the supermarket, and uh, uh, on the species that we need uh, to uh, take care in the world, uh, and, and there are 100,000, uh, only few species uh, we, 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 we stay with, uh, so only 3% of uh, cereal we, we eat. Like, uh, and of, of these 3%, uh, 
only three major cereals are eaten by 60% of the people in the world, like rice, maize, and, co and um, uh, wheat, wheat. And so um, what we see, even in our industry where we produce specialty oils, uh, even the clients are normally uh, stock with, uh, with the standard uh, commodities, so sunflower oil, olive oil, and uh, there are thousands of seeds. You know, the seeds are, are the life. There is no life uh, with the seeds, uh, and, uh, and the seeds are important for, for us because they are source of proteins and fibers and uh, fats. And these fats uh, need to be the most possible difference. So again, how many of you knows, you know, vegetable oil? If we talk about, maybe we speak about palm oil, like again, olive oil, sunflower oil, uh, canola oil, and uh, whatever, you know, maybe a bit of avocado or grapeseed oil. But all these oils are fully processed. Like today, everybody say, ah, I need to eat uh, less refined product, like, you know, less processed. And um, so what we start to work with, uh, uh, especially uh, we collect seeds from all around the world. Uh, and especially we collect those seeds uh, that are coming from uh, those countries. You have uh, some in Caspian region, but they are that neglected species uh, like uh, Baobab in Africa or uh, sea buckthorn, that is a special shrubs that grows uh, in the Alpine region where they are source of vitamin C and uh, nutrients. So we are committed to uh, collect those uh, uh, seeds or those raw material and make it uh, turn in uh, oil and protein and fibers. And by using... What are the challenges that we're getting, uh, yes. we're facing to get to source all of these? Uh, yes, the problem important. is that we don't, we don't know that they exist. Readings. There is no information. So. In a world that we are all connected, we normally eat what is really easy for us. And that is a big problem, not only because by not collecting those biodiversity, we don't help the forest you know, to, to be alive, because we live in the towns, so in the cities, and we more and more abandon the, you know, the inland, and these places are full of, of food and, and uh, you know, very, you know, biodiverse, so different species. So these ingredients uh, are important to us to survive more than one year, 100 years. And, uh, and, and the quality of what we eat today is, is really low. So uh, uh, the, the target is really to be uh, linked together and to, to, to be also in a community like these people in the blue zone, they are different and they, they share information and, uh, and look after what you, you, you buy and, uh, and especially what, what you eat and, put, and even put in the skin. So unfortunately, uh, I cannot tell you the, the, the receipt now, but <laughs> it is important by looking at the range of the oils that we have, uh, around uh, 65 uh, different uh, of uh, vegetable oils. You know, may, may, mainly you, you don't know maybe the, the, the 5% of what we produce. And another story that I can share, like, um, because now, it seems like it's impossible to do something, uh, but um, I live in Genova. I don't know if you know, uh, but uh, it was one of the famous uh, uh, Marinara Republic uh, with Venice, and uh, so we are Americans since uh, hundred years. And um, and the, in in Genova, in the Liguria, where there is like a nicer coast, uh, we have a lot of mountains. And in these mountains, um, you know, in Italy we have a lot of hazelnuts. More in Turkey, but uh, a lot of in Italy, the second place in the world where hazelnut grows. And, um, and there is a place nearby Genoa that they harvest hazelnut since 1,000 here. And they are uh, the only one uh, slow food uh, hazelnut uh, in the world, uh, five species, uh, and they are harvested by people that uh, are 85 years old. That I've been there before Christmas to, 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 to say hello, and they were like, uh, a little house, you know, 
eating happy and, uh, and surviving the life. Uh, and I just uh, worked with these people to collect this hazelnut and they made a spread like, to help them. So you can do something, just uh, look around you and, uh, and see what uh, is possible. You know, that's Thank you. Point. Thank you, Andre. Sorry. If I can pass the microphone to okay. Sasha, because <laughs> I'd like to talk about the work you do, Sasha, because it's, it's absolutely um, vital with your expertise and what you're doing in surgery, especially heart surgery, cardiology. You're actually taking that to um, developing countries, your know-how, and you're sharing that, and that's very important to the SDG um, of education and, um, and empowering them to actually be able to look after what is actually killing a lot of people today in those regions. Please tell us about the work you do. Uh, thank you. First, I agree with Julia, the emergency on HIV is crucial. In Western Europe, however, we are seeing that HIV patients no longer die of HIV, they die of cardiovascular disease. Because HIV is now a risk factor for cardiovascular disease, in part due to the fact that we give uh, drugs to these patients who promote cardiovascular disease. So the work I do um, as part of the Eurasia Heart Foundation is we take teams of uh, heart surgeons, anesthesiologists, OR nurses, and we go to areas in the world where there is no heart surgery. We do this first with a humanitarian uh, idea in mind, to go there to save lives, to operate children, to operate adults. I've prepared a couple of slides. I don't know if Please. we can, if we can show do. these. And um, so that's one part, that's a humanitarian part. The other part is, so I'm speaking on behalf of the Eurasia Heart Foundation and the Heart Rhythm Center in Zurich is the other, the for-profit branch, which allows us to do this work. Next slide, please. It's non-politic, uh, no politics involved. However, to get licenses, to be able to go to the ORs, we need uh, contacts and sometimes we also have to bribe people so we can do our work it's unfortunate so we have funding challenge the funding of these projects can be challenging because we have to know where the money goes and that's a really crucial part so what's the sustainability and the growth next uh I will show you a bit more. So now, uh, this is a small movie from the Eurasia Heart Foundation. We have uh, sound with it too, because we have nice music. Press play, please. It shows uh, some images from a recent mission we did in Mar. You're making it very suspicious. <laughs> So on these missions, we're about uh, 10 to 15 people every time. So this is a logistical challenge to get everyone going, uh, from the doctors, the nurses, anesthesiologists. We have to bring everything with us, all the instruments. We, we can't play the video. OK, so next slide, unfortunately. So to summarize, um, we have 120 people who are committed to the Eurasia Heart Foundations. We have done over 4,000 surgeries worldwide, uh, 21,000 patients treated, and we've spent six million Swiss francs in uh, funds, which leads to $350 million of worth created if we would have done these procedures in Switzerland. So it's, we're actually number one if we look at the countries, the hospitals, the missions and the patients treated. And this on the right is the president of the Swiss Confederation who is heading up, uh, who is our, a patron of uh, our foundation. So uh, we'd be glad to welcome you all. Eurasia Heart Foundation, you will find us on Google. Um, we're very uh, thankful for donations, but also thankful for some tips on places we can go next. Uh, also interested uh, medical specialists who want to help us go further. But that's the one part, is bringing uh, medicine to the people who need it. Next slide. The next part is the for-profit part. How can I, in my daily medical practice, help people who work in medical fields which are not so developed? So we have, on a fee-for-service basis, we have uh, relationships with industry. We have physicians coming to our centers in Switzerland who, have, who are hands-on, who can learn our treatments, our therapies, and whom we can guide with our networks. We can go there, we can send them, we can help them do the procedures with uh, even FaceTime, with uh, WhatsApp video calls, 
item through indications in whom to do what. The funding is clear. There it's really it's money which we spend on them and also governments who help us. So it's, it's a whole part of strategic public health counseling, uh, consulting which I call it. So there's an economic link and that's why I think why the, the WEF is so important for us. Next slide. And in regards to cardiovascular care, we are two teams of surgeons and cardiologists who manage to spread out in a small network. We're, we're only six doctors. So we manage with these six doctors and partners all around the world universities to set up these networks next, next and go bring uh, a smiling face to a child with things we wrap up uh, uh, echo machines drugs uh, unused supplies in the or everything we use in Zurich in the operating theater is sterilized we take with us again and help other people in a humanitarian fashion I just want to tell you you have big device companies who re-sterilize things we use in the OR all over Europe and then sell it to Asian countries. That's also something we must know. But I mean, we, we pack this stuff up, ship it out, and then also we can bring people to our uh, high-end facilities. And we also have people who will fly in treatments who come from developing countries. And obviously, this is a great way to interact the humanitarian, non-profit with the profit part. So th this was in short what we do, how we do it, but it's, it's really difficult in this uh, two, three minutes to tell you everything. Exactly. But it, our heart is with it, and we really try and bring it to the people who need it the most. Thank right. you so much, Sasha. Congratulations on the work you're doing. I would like to take, um, put Marsha, if I can give you um, the voice right now. We are running low on time. <laughs> we have well, a very I, short I, panel. I try, I try to be Thank a very you. short. If you can because, tell us about yeah. the work you're doing yeah. in Russia. Yes and why you opened the medical centers, yeah. and what are the most significant um, ailments that you are treating through your center, and some of the technology you're using. Okay. Um, uh, we started uh, with centers in Moscow, and they are more spa medical centers. So this is all for the prevention for the diseases. So you come, for example, uh, 75 uh, percent of people who are going to the doctors, uh, the problems they have uh, are uh, psychological stress, uh, with, um, according to the stress ailments. That's why uh, you have to do something before, before you have your burnout, before you take some additional uh, medical uh, uh, pills uh, without, without going to the doctors. You just know that you can't uh, 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 cope with the problems, with the, risk of, uh, the risks of our absolute uh, busy life today. And uh, we have uh, all uh, not any more uh, clean minds because uh, of course we are from uh, the baby life almost we are having our telephones and uh, iPads in the hand so it's really a problem and I think uh, uh, the future is uh, lying in the integral medicine where we have uh, uh, for example the old traditional methods uh, like Chinese medicine or we are speaking here about the producing of absolutely new plants or uh, uh, and oils, because it is something coming from nature, and if we uh, uh, do something against it, or for example, we uh, we spoke now about uh, the old diseases who are coming back. So we all need uh, real uh, health, and we want all uh, all to be healthy, fit for uh, everyday life, and of course. Uh, we want to be beautiful, but we can be beautiful only if we are healthier. And that's why, for example, we started the centers with flotation and floating center is something very special because uh, it is uh, really against stress, against burnout. And uh, uh, it is also, um, for example, there were a lot of uh, uh, physical, um, 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 sorry, I, I, I tell you now, um, um, Will we get a bit more time? Yeah, 27% tw <laughs> of uh, different studies that uh, flotation uh, uh, therapy also uh, um, diminishes uh, blood uh, um, um, 
bladder pressure, disease, yeah, yeah pressure, and yeah. the level of uh, cortisol, this this stress right. hormone. Yes. So that's uh, well. If we take all these methods together, yes. it brings very s a special sort of center. It makes sense because we're seventy percent water. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, if we immerse ourselves in water, we relieve stress immediately. Yeah. It's a harmony to our body. And um, so I, it makes sense that the flotation therapy really works. Yeah. Yeah. So osteopathy we are, too. We are and running uh, low, and, uh, f low with time because <laughs> I don't know if we can have five minutes more. But if I can introduce still two more people, if I can go to, okay, if I can go to Tian, sorry. Tian, if you can introduce something about uh, um, Chinese medicine, traditional Chinese, Chinese medicine to us, and also the herbal medicine that um, your company is producing. Okay, sure. Th thank you. Thank you very much for having me here. It's really a great honor. Thank you, Shireen. And uh, I'm so happy to be here. But, uh, you know, the first time I saw this topic, sustainability in health and wellness industry, I feel a little bit panic. You know, I, I'm, I'm, my role is responsible for selling. And uh, every day I contact with numbers and uh, the sales, the revenues, and uh, how much money uh, we can earn. I'm sorry, my English is quite uh, basic. It, it's I don't perfect. Know. It's, it's perfect. It's okay. Um, I don't know the fancy words. And, uh, uh, and how much percentage risk uh, compared to last year, something like that. I, I went through the list you sent to me, and uh, it's, it's like... Uh, some overwhelming <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's really like by 2030 re how to reduce the targets. third premature mortality from non-communicate diseases or by 2020 have the number of global deaths and injuries from road traffic accident I, I'm like what can I do about this I'm just doing sales or from from my pers um, my role and uh, what, what should I deal with it? And uh, there should, should be someone like Yulia from UN to handle this, this very national level word. But on the second side, I talked to Shireen and uh, Martha and uh, they are so helpful, uh, supportive. And I feel like I just refreshed uh, about myself, what it is that we do. And actually we don't need to just care about the numbers. We have to relate it ourselves with all the goals Actually, our, our company have the social responsibility department and responsible for all these things. And but, but before I didn't think think about it. How related? How what I care about is the sales the numbers. I'm sure I'm not the only one. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> Um, but, but how to engage ourselves, I just think, you know, I worked in a company to produce the Chinese herbal health product. And in this panel, I introduced myself. And today I met uh, people who said, I met you yesterday, you just do some, some herbal thing. And that's, that's most the people think of me. They don't understand what did I do, especially in China too. Although it's a traditional Chinese medicine, it's a pity that more and more people didn't realize how beautiful it is. It really works. And uh, from my part, and just we organized some public lectures to help them to, re to just uh, know um, the, the basic concept of Chinese medicine. Actually, our, our products based, uh, are built based on these principles, and it really works very well. I think it's a great fortune. And uh, we organize, I think, more than, more than 10,000 uh, public lectures, and it works very well. And the people learned, you know, the, the medicine. I, I think the traditional Chinese medicine is different from the Western medicine. It's mainly because we are more uh, proactive. And the Western medicine is somehow is reactive. After it happens, you cure it. But it really costs a lot of money. In China, the healthcare system is not covered very well. And so we, we have seen, you know, the, some modest, so, some people from modest families, they save the all life, the money, and just for go to the hospital. And they spend a fortune there. That's their life. So I think it's really good to 
to provoke a Chinese, Chinese traditional medicine concept. It's about the daily life. It's about just how you eat, the diet, and uh, this kind of thing is very simple. We don't need to spend a lot of money on it, but, but you will reward a lot. If time a lot, actually, it works for salespeople. It really engages the salespeople. They love to bring people to go to the, go to listen to the lectures. And it helps us to sell the products too. I think it's kind of a win-win. If we want to really engage the people, and we need to find some, some point related to them. And if time a lot, I want to no, no. quickly go through. Yeah, please. I just really want to introduce our Chinese uh, traditional medicine concept. We have, a, we have a slide to put up? Yes. The first is optimized tea. And uh, we, we think if, uh, if it's, like, it's very beautiful, it's like a philosophy. We said uh, mm, just that if we are strong enough and uh, nobody can invent us, and uh, if we are weak, actually every, everything could be our enemy. That's, that's the first one. I just go quickly yeah, through it. Yeah, because I'm told that yeah, we are yeah. running out of time and I've still got one more uh, person to oh, speak. Oh, okay. So the yeah. next slide. Yeah. Please. Yeah, the second one is balance of yin and yang. Actually, about Chinese culture, is everything is about balance. There's no good or bad of which one is better, yin better or yang better. But it is balance is the best uh, but Mm, the best situation, like there's a typical yin deficiency. If you lack of yin, there will cause a monopause. Monopause actually many women will experience it and emotion situations. But if you have enough yin in, uh, in, uh, in your body, you will just uh, pass through these symptoms very smoothly. Thank and you. the third one, sorry, and this is a five. Oh, five elements. And, uh, in, in the, this is quite the basic of Chinese culture. It's, uh, it can operate five organs, the inner organs of our body, which cause re respond to five food, fire, earth, metal, and water. And uh, all these uh, all these elements correspond to other elements uh, like the the from the spring spring. And uh, for example, like this is a winter time, it should people should, uh, for it could be beneficial for them to raise the kidney and to store a little bit, don't exercise too much. Like I, in Davos, it's very cold and all the sleeves are actually very narrow and uh, like needle, but spring and is the season for, for everything to grow. So like in California, the leaves are all very big. Actually, it's, it's I, I related to, to the... Yeah, <laughs> sorry. <Okay. laughs> I have to give Daniel a quick moment okay, so that he can co help us much. conclude here. Daniel, sorry about taking up the time. I have He's got a, a microphone. Uh, a slide, please. And one slide up there, please. Uh, yes, yeah. it's a short uh, reflection, but uh, I talk in Spanish better. Um, can we have the slide, please? The last one. Mi, mi reflexión es que eh, para la parte de educación es más importante eh, que los gobiernos y las grandes empresas. So in my thought process, it's uh, it's a lot more important for uh, governments and big corporations. Dejemos de utilizar uh, el foco en el usuario y lo convertamos el usuario en líder, líder de su familia, de su colectivo. So actually, it's more about engaging the customer so that it's not actually a customer, but it be, he be uh, an ambassador. It turns a little bit what, what she said before, which is it's, it's, it's more about the lifestyle. It's, it's about taking leadership of, of, of how you do things. The, um, uh, this slide is uh, so the, my country is the, the best in the top, no? But uh, this is not it's a casualty, but uh, it's, a, it's a fact about the Mediterranean food, and then the base is uh, oil, olive, and then this is the, uh, the more important uh, element. This element have too much uh, polyphenols, and then I think is uh, with the education and investigation uh, is uh, better for uh, for the new uh, generation. But lo lo que quiero decir con esto es que la investigación 
eh, y la educación consigue eliminar los mitos y leyendas en torno a la nutrición, en torno a la salud. And that's it. So, so, so it's basically an olive, uh, and and one of the things that would join one of the panelists as well is that they are using um, uh, stuff that is not uh, used when it's processed. So you also deal with the waste, and uh, and and the waste is now uh, used. So on one side you eliminate the waste, and on the other side you actually t take the nutrients from that and turn it into something that, that can be useful for, for healthcare. Thank you so much. I think that we have run out of time. It, if we can ask for another panel next year, <laughs> because I think it's an interesting subject. It's the first time we've done this on, yeah, we've got a question as well. So can we have your question? Thank you for the great talk. Uh, my name is Safa. I uh, run a management consulting company in healthcare where we try to put the human and human values at the core of uh, innovation, uh, specifically in healthcare. I have a question specifically for Yulia and Sasha. I mean, the others, you had great contributions, but um, is there an opportunity to go beyond the so-called Robin Hood model where we make money in the West to deliver uh, human societal value in the, in the East or other regions of the world? Um, if yes, how should that be, and uh, do you think there's an opportunity for that? Uh, thank you very much. Great question. Actually, uh, one of our key priorities uh, is not just to deliver medicines and put people on treatment and then leave the country, but to build capacity. This is at the core of our mandate. We go in and we educate doctors and nurses and governments and their financial medical institutions. We improve their, uh, their systems so that they can do it themselves. We go in to help with an exit strategy. So that when we leave the systems, the health systems are in place and can cope with uh, 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 issues going forward. This is at the, um, uh, at, at, at the core of our mandate. And we see an increasing number of governments, developing countries, who are approaching us with their own money with money that are coming from their national budgets and asking for help. So we actually don't just use the money from the West going to the East uh, or to the developing countries, but we also see a lot of feedback and a lot of interest in, um, in our assistance. But thank you for the great question. Thank you. I'm told we've run out of time. A, sh a short yes, comment. Please. I will vote for Yulia as president. <laughs> She's my president. Yes. I agree with everything. Thank uh, you. One, one important thing is patient uh, human empowerment. Patients are becoming more and more aware of their own conditions. And this is something we can influence. Diabetes, too little sport, smoking, cardiovascular disease, mental health. All this, we can go directly to the patients and get them involved which will make them better and they'll make the politicians spend the money on the issues which are important for them. Thank you. Thank you so much Sasha. I think uh, we're going to have to wrap it up because the next panel is ready.